YouTube, the Priest of Sigmar, say what the crap's going on. Welcome to the battlefield, where we're going to have a matchup between Vampire Counts and Empire, led by Boris Toddbringer, who's become a pretty popular lord with the Empire. And understandably so, his regeneration, while still having most of the same characteristics as Karl Franz, make a lot of sense. Would like to see them take a look at the legendary lords in a patch before they're done with this. Woohoo! That stinks. Luminarch of Hiss just uh, whiffed it right there. Gotta watch that um, line of fire. So, unfortunate for the Empire player to uh, be whiffing a shot out of such an expensive unit. Frontline for the Empire is a few great swords backed up, or on the flanks, they're spearmen. There's a couple of free company militia, and I kind of actually like this pick versus the vampires. Sometimes. Um, and then there's some tatter soles and uh, spears in the back. And then the uh, silver bullets up front. There's a light wizard accompanying Boris, which I think is a great choice. Um, the net of Amantok, and then also if you bring the right, um, if you bring the right, uh, I'm trying to here. Let's pause. And let me show you what I'm talking about, so that we don't ma actually miss the battle. So if you look at the light wizard, yeah, right here. Map wide affects the undead. Minus four leadership map wide. So it's a good thing to have against the undead. I feel like. Especially since the Light Wizard's also so useful. You can see, um, nice shot there from the Luminart. Puts a pretty heavy roasting on the uh, Vargulf. There's a Claw of Nagash, Red Duke, lots of horrors. I believe there's four horrors. And then a pretty sturdy line of Graveguard up front. Um, so, interesting vampire army here. Foregoing the cavalry and going with more monsters. See how that turns out. In this case, the Flying Lords are going to go mostly unopposed. Look at this, though. The Red Duke hit by a net of Amantok and then popped with the Luminarch. That's going to leave him extremely vulnerable to this. He's uh, getting caught and destroyed. So, going with the Flying Lord versus the Empire. Uh, the Vampire's just thinking, ah, I can outrun him. If they don't have a Light Wizard, that would be true. If they have a Light Wizard, it's pretty risky. So I think if you're going to take a Flying Lord versus the uh, Empire, you got to kind of consider this. You can see he is fast, right? He is fast, but it's the net that's the problem. So the Red Duke is dead early on in this battle. And I can already see the comments starting, Ayers, you never show the vampires win, or you never show the vampires lose. <laughs> I've been enjoying those, by the way. <laughs> I like a good sarcastic comment. Zap! You can see the... Uh, the recipient of that Luminar glove was the Claw of Nagash, which is a very cool looking unit. Let's go get a close up on it. That frame rate, though, good grief. 120 or 30 frames per second out here away from this. Warhammer runs so much better. I mean, yeah, it gets bogged down in like the bigger siege battles and stuff like that, but it runs so much better than previous Total Wars. I love it. Man, hey, how about that announcement, too? Remember how I was saying that Creative Assembly should make it where you could put custom maps in the campaign? And then they did it a day later. Talk about awesome. Apparently they were getting that feedback from a lot of people, not just me. And uh, I, I think it's great. That is fantastic that they're listening to feedback. And I am so stoked. Like, my Chaos campaign is going to be amazing. Because there's going to be all these custom maps. The Bretonia campaign should have cool custom maps. I am so stoked about the custom map thing. I mean... I was saying it on, and some people, well, it looks like a lot of people liked my comment about it, and then some people hated it. Um, I, I think this is the coolest thing that's happened to Total War ever. And the reason I say that is back in the day, you did have modders, and they were able to mod the campaign map of, uh, and they did some really cool stuff in Medieval 2, don't get me wrong, but this is supported by the, uh, by Creative Assembly. You can, you can make your campaign a custom experience. And this is something I've wanted for a number of years. And Warhammer already has a really good formula going on with the factions and the campaign and all that other stuff. And when you add in this custom maps, it just makes the possibilities limitless. I love it. I think it's fantastic. I am so excited. Like I said, I, I honestly feel like this is the biggest news I have ever heard since I've been following Total War. And uh, that's saying something in my opinion. So I'm, I'm totally stoked. I'm glad to see Creative Assembly taking this route. Look at the, the Claw of Nagash being kept away from the fight. And uh, the Free Company Militia are not armor-piercing, which typically is a drawback for them, being gunners, because you lose good line of sight. But these guys can Vanguard deploy. They can hide pretty good. And they don't need armor-piercing versus the vampires. And it's because vampire monsters tend to be low armor. So this makes these guys actually pretty well suited to trying to take out um, like Cryptors and stuff like that. And they're decent in a melee scrum. 
once they uh, have to. Not great, but they're decent. So I actually kind of like the pick of a couple of free company militia to, uh, to serve there with the silver bullets. I think it's pretty cool. So the vampires are having a hard time cutting through. Their leadership dying early is always rough, and you can see the Cryptor is taking a continual line of fire, and the, um, the Claw of Nagash getting picked at by the uh, uh, Luminarch, and it took a nasty hit, and here it starts crumbling because of the fire there, and the, it goes down. Boris was about to follow up on it. Look at Boris just prancing through the uh, vampires like they're not there. Boris, the Toddbringer. And he's gonna get in here and start wrecking more vampires. Check it out, the Crypt Whores using their mass to just pull through the lines and smash these handgunners. Awesome looking, but it's a little too late now at this point. The handgunners have kind of done their damage, and then the, look at the Free Company militia over here, still able to fire in from the flank. Morris is here, and the, the vampire leadership is going to start to falter. It's just too much. You got the Light Wizard. Well, you did have the Light Wizard. I think he got routed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Light Wizard got, uh, got killed, but he did a good job. That was a heroic victory for the Empire player. It was well played. The Vampire player had a tough army, and both of the uh, Araka boss there is ranked very high on the ladder. Um, so he is a competent player. And uh, Romulan and Dog there had a great game. And I thought that this was a fun game in the sense that it showed some free company militia, which you don't see a whole lot of. And then uh, the Luminarch doing well. And uh, it's kind of hard not to like watching the Luminarch do well. I mean, it's like a giant laser gun. You, you can't not enjoy that. <laughs> now, obviously, the Vampires, I think, have a lot of tools uh, to make the Empire pay. But I still think the Empire's top dog. And I used to think that the Vampires are right there in Tier 1. I, I'm not saying I think the Vampires are, like, bad all of a sudden. But I almost kind of feel like... I definitely feel like Greenskins and Empire are Tier 1... Vampires are probably right up there with them. I could be wrong. But all three of those factions are pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the state of balancing in this game right now, too. Chaos, man, how about them? They've been they've been a lot more frightening in the more recent patches. A whole lot more frightening. And the dwarves, uh, they're, they're way better now, too. The dwarves are way better. So I feel like that the, the state of balancing in this game is interesting. It's fun, and it makes the online battles fun because... First of all, you got enough factions, and each of those factions plays significantly different. And then usually within each of those significantly different factions, there are significantly different options. Now, some factions more than other. And the fact that Bretonia is probably... Now, this is just a guess. There's probably going to be a new lore of magic with Bretonia. Um, and then there's probably going to be... They'll probably focus on making Bretonia cavalry dominant. So you're going to have an interesting uh, balance here, I think, where you have the Wood Elves, which are Supreme Skirmishers. You're going to have the Beastmen, who are kind of like your fast-hitting, um, low-armor but high-attack type of faction. You're going to have the Dwarfs, which are your high-armor, slow, high-defense type of faction. And then you're going to have um, the Greenskins being your heavy-hitting, you know, lots of monsters, lots of infantry. Like the, They're going to be your heavy-hitting faction, like all-attack. Um, which makes them a lot of fun, except they've got a lot of variety, too, when compared to, say, like, the Beastmen. Um, and then you've got uh, the Empire, which is like your jack-of-all-trades. Um, and I would say Master of None, but they are Master of One, which is magic. They have more magic than any other faction by a long shot. Um, so that's the one thing that they're a master of, in my opinion. They've got tons of options. The Vampires, which rely on numbers and healing to just outlast you, outgrind you. And then, of course, you know, uh, I think we mentioned the Wood Elves. And then the Warriors of Chaos, which is like the... They're like the slower but tankier rush. Um, and they have decent monsters to back it up with. So I really like the dynamic they have between the factions. And I think this is only going to get more fun as you get into a second Warhammer game. And we're going to see, like, Skaven and Lizardmen and Tomb Kings and all this other stuff added. Dark Elves. There's, there's a ton of factions. Ogres. Um, there's going to be a lot of fun stuff to do and so I'm definitely looking forward to it and uh, really happy with where this game's at I could not be more stoked about this custom maps going into campaign that's gonna be so exciting we're definitely gonna break out some more campaigns and also I'm planning some live streams in the future where we'll take these custom maps and play some fun scenario battles on custom maps so I think it's gonna be great be good for the longevity of the game what do you think are you excited about the custom map announcement obviously I am Tell me your thoughts in the comments. Air of Carthage signing out for now. I'll see you all back soon.